In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the pipeline for exporting and importing assets into Unreal Engine 4. All right, so you'll want to start out with your asset built um, inside of your 3D software package of your choice. It could be 3ds Max, like you see here, or it could be Maya or Softimage, uh, whichever you want to use. So there are a couple of things that you'll need to um, pay attention to whenever you uh, are ready to export out your mesh. Uh, first thing is you need to make sure that it's UV properly. Um, so once you've built it, UV it out. I'm going to go ahead and add an, um, an unwrap UVW modifier just so that way we can see its UVs. And with these, you can take a look here. You can see that the UVs are split apart and some are even going outside of the, um, the UV space and that's okay because it's using a, a wood texture that is just generic and it's been UV'd to that texture. Now, with your uh, first map channel, the UV channel 1, um, this is going to be your main UV channel. And so this is where your diffuse map is going to go, your normal map, um, ambient occlusion map if you have that. All of that is going to be derived from this first channel. Now you can have a second map channel. So if you have overlapping UVs like this on your uh, geometry, um, you must have a second map channel which will be used for your light maps. So for example, I've already set this up. Let me go ahead and close this down. If I go into the uh, second map channel, it's going to ask me if I want to, um, if I would like to move my current UVs over or do I want to uh, abandon those changes. I'm going to say abandon that and then I'm going to go ahead and open the UV editor. This is what it looks like on map channel 2. Notice how all the UVs are separated from one another. Um, this allows me to have a, uh, a really nice um, light map whenever it bakes out. Okay, So if you have overlapping UVs, you must have a second UV channel. So a way that we can um, ensure that is make sure that you go to the um, UV channel 2, okay, map channel 2, and then you can hit um, move or abandon, whichever you want to do. Um, and then you'll go into your UV editor and you'll select your UVs, okay, just like you would like here. And then you can do a flatten mapping on that and simply hit OK and then it'll flatten all of those out. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and pack that so that way you can get the most resolution out of that. And then from here, you'll simply convert it to edible poly. So I now have an object that has two map channels, one for my diffuse normal map, um, all of my different textures, and then one for my light map. The second thing that you'll want to make sure about your model is you want to make sure that it is um, on the origin. So the, the object itself is on the origin, but also the pivot point of your object. So to check your pivot point, I'll make sure that that is set there. Grab your Move tool and make sure it's set to 0, 0, and 0. Turn off your Effect Pivot only. And then whenever we bring this into Unreal Engine 4, you'll notice that the pivot point will be around this corner. And we can go ahead and we can rotate it um, like so. Now once all of that has been set, we need to export this out. We're going to be using the FBX uh, workflow for that. To export, we'll simply go to File and then Export, Export Selected and then you're going to choose a file that you want that to go to. So in my case, we have project files, and then I'm going to put it in this FBX files folder. I'm going to go ahead and call it crate mesh, just like you see here. And I'm going to hit save. And it's going to ask me if I want to override it. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and override it. Now there are some, um, some quick presets that you'll need to go through here. Or not presets, but some parameters that you'll want to go through. First thing you'll want to do is you want to make sure smoothing groups is turned on, and you also want to make sure that tangents and binormals is turned on, so that way that's imported in. And then you'll also want to preserve your edge orientation. Okay, Those are the only three that you'll need uh, whenever exporting to Unreal Engine 4. Okay, Now beyond that, we don't need the animations or anything like that because this is not an animated object, so obviously that's not needed. We do not want to embed any media. And then you want to make sure that you're using the FBX format of binary and using the FBX 2013. As of the recording of this video, 2013 is the highest you sh should go. Now beyond that, let's go ahead and hit OK. And then once that has exported out, we need to bring that into Unreal Engine 4. So let's go ahead and bring up our level. 
And you'll notice here that I have several folders um, already set up. And I've done this ahead of time so that way we can get things going a little bit faster. But I'm going to show you this process of doing um, all of this. So to create a folder, you can come up here to New. But before you do that, you want to make sure that you are um, you have the folder selected in which you want that folder to go into, that new folder. So select Game, go to New, and then New Folder. Once you click on that, you can rename it to anything that you like. I'm just going to call this Test Folder and hit Enter. Now that folder has been placed in, and now we can start importing objects into that folder. Now in this case, I'm going to bring in my crate mesh that we just exported from 3ds Max. I'm going to go ahead and put that into my DT underscore props folder. So with that selected, we'll simply come up here to import, or we could right click on the folder, and we could say uh, uh, import to game DT props. Okay, either way. So let's do import, and then we're going to find where that file was. It was under project files. We're going to go to FBX files, and there's our crate mesh.fbx. Simply hit open, and it's going to bring up your FBX import options. We need to determine what kind of object or asset is being brought in. So in this case, it's auto-detected that it's a static mesh, meaning that it didn't recognize any bones, and it didn't recognize any keyframes on those. So static mesh is what we're using. Um, LOD group none and import normals. Um, you can calculate those, um, but I'm just going to say import normals, and then we're going to do advanced. And you can look through some of these options. I normally keep those as default. Um, if we have multiple objects in a static mesh, I go ahead and combine those on a normal basis. Uh, there may be instances where you don't want to do that. Now, you may also have LODs that you'll want to bring in as well. Um, if you want to learn more about um, importing static meshes and you really want to get into that, we have a course uh, for that. It is the Game Asset Pipeline uh, for Unreal Engine 4. Um, and you'll learn how to bring in a static mesh with LODs and, and how to import those materials and everything uh, beyond that. So it goes a little more in depth than what we're doing here. Now at this point, we'll, sim point, we'll simply um, say import, seeing how it's a single object. But if we had multiple, we could do import all. So let's import, and there is our mesh. So with that, we can double click on it. And this is going to open up our static mesh editor. And here we can start to set up different options about our object. Let's go ahead and left click on this tab. And I'm going to drag this right up here and dock it next to our level editor so I can switch back and forth very quickly. Now at this point, you'll see that uh, we have a little bit of information about our crate. We have It's on currently on LOD 0. Uh, screen size, what that is, triangles and vertex, vertex count, and then the UV channels. Remember, we had set up two UV channels for that. So there's the diffuse map. And then we'll also have a channel for our light map. Now, before moving on, we need to make sure that we set that up properly so it understands exactly which channel it should use for the light map. So to do that, we'll go down to Static Mesh Settings. Go ahead and expand out to get more of these advanced options. And then you'll see that it says Light Map Coordinate. Now, by default, it's going to be set to 0. And 0 is going to be the first channel. But we put this on channel 2 that was in 3ds Max. So we want to make sure this is set to 1. Okay. Once that has finished, you can go ahead and save out your static mesh. Now beyond that, you'll notice that we don't have a material applied to this object. We need to create a material for that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to stop the lesson here, and I'm going to talk, talk to you about how to create materials and then apply them to your props inside of Unreal Engine 4. So I'll see you in the next lesson.